Hi there, thanks for checking out our, our repair channel. If this is your first time seeing one of our videos, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button if you like this kind of stuff, or just like learn about electric fence units and different things. Uh, if you want to look at our channel, we've got uh, 350 plus videos on YouTube uh, talking about electric fence chargers. Uh, we also work on the cattle scales and low bars, stuff like we've got a few videos of, of that sort of stuff out there as well. The low bars and weigh scales for weighing cattle and other livestock animals. Um, but uh, if you do a search on YouTube for a particular unit or model or brand, there's probably a video out there of one. Uh, we've got some how-to videos. We've got some review videos on units. Um, we've got some just like show and tell videos, kind of like what this video is going to be about you know a unit how it works what it looks like on the inside and that sort of stuff so we got a little bit of everything like i said we do have some how to repair videos on certain brands and models and stuff like that there's some models and brands a little bit harder to go through and talk about while you're work, trying to work on at the same time because they take some of these can take a little while to figure out and so uh, that's why we don't always put videos of all the repair ones that we do just because uh, it takes time to do those kind of videos, and I want to make an hour-long video. Uh, but anyways, uh, there is some description. Uh, down in the description area, there are some links to our websites. Um, we've got two websites. We've got the Fencer Fixer Repair uh, website, which is fencerfixer.com. And we do have our Cattle Scale Repair uh, website as well, where, where we work on electric fence chargers and stuff and everything. But um, you can get a hold of us any time there. Um, you send us an email and everything uh, call us text me whatever um we're just an independent shop work on fence charge of all brands all sizes all ages uh you know if it's 60 years old older newer we'll tinker on it you know don't you got an old one sitting in the barn or the garage or belong to your granddad or your dad or whatever uh send it here let us take a peek at it i mean there are some old ones that are really really well built uh and stuff so um just i wouldn't throw it away i mean even if it looks like a pile of crap it's all rusted out you know that could just be caused met the inside could be still salvageable and repairable um but all right well enough of that blabbering on we'll go ahead and we'll talk about this unit here this uh is called an electric shepherd it's a esm 2000 it's a uh i believe a I couldn't tell you if it's 2 joule, 20 joule, I don't know, or maybe it's a 8 joule, I'm not sure, because the way the inside's set up, it's kind of hard to say exactly what size it is, because uh, of the capacitor and everything that's in there. But this is a British-made unit, um, uh, it's a 220 model internally, but they have a 110 plug, 110 volt plug on the outside, I'll show you what they do inside there. Um, it's got a little fuse right down here. It's got three terminals at the ground, full power and like a reduced or half power uh, terminals. You get it basically just brings the shock down a little bit. So if you want to run a smaller area, or if you don't want as much charge in the fence because animals are staying put and they're learning, they know what the electric fence is, and you don't want to hit them so hard. You could put a put on the um, the half power reduced power setting. Um, this is not a waterproof unit. So they actually say, uh, install unit in a clean, dry location, right down there in the bottom of the case. And most plug-in models of most brands are like that. No matter the brand that's out there, most of the AC models are not uh, waterproof by any means. So a lot of them don't even have gaskets. So they're, put them outside, but build a box for them or put a cover over them or something on all, at least three of the sides, tops and the top and the two sides. So, we'll take this unit apart. Nothing inside the case. Well, the thing it's got is a little lens on the side here, which will flash kind of a red-orange with every pulse. And those lights are actually these two right here behind this little clear lens. That's the inside of it. Um, just to kind of give you an overview layout of how this unit flows. This, like I said, this is a 220 volt internally, internal unit. This transformer right here takes 110, converts to 220, and that goes up to right here on this board. 
and then so it's it, it so internally it runs as a 220 volt model which is what they sold over there in you know new england and everything um but uh it's got this great big capacitor here this particular one is a 35 microfarad capacitor inside this one and for being uh probably 20 five-year-old units capacitor. I don't know if it's ever been replaced before or not, but the capacitor's still good. Um, the only thing that it had wrong with it was it had issues with the main board. And if you look at this capacitor, the tab right here was all burnt up. And luckily, the one behind it, which is the same electrically as that one, we just um, unplugged it from that, from that one, snipped off the uh, connector, put a new spade connector on, and plugged on this back one back here. And this one was starting to arc and do the same thing back here. So we pull the wire uh, off this one, put a new connector on it, slid it on that one. And that helped it out, but still wasn't running quite right. There was issues with the board. This age, you know, this things have gotten just wore out over time. And had to replace components on the board that were just weak. Um... And then uh, we did replace uh, one resistor right here because it was working. Lights were very, very, very dim. They're actually, well, they were burnt out, so we put two new ones in, but they were barely flashing. I barely see them uh, putting out anything. And then we tested across here, and I was only getting like 1,000, 2,000 volts. So I was like, well, either this board is bad or the transformer is bad. So I unplugged the transformer wires, which are these on this one, a red and green one, pulled them off, put my fence tester across those two wires, and I was getting like 8,000 volts out of it. I was like, okay, well, the transformer's good. And so, well, the issue's in the board somewhere. So I then screw this board, pull it off, look at it. And um, all these look physically good. These are like, um, oh, the surge suppressors, basically. Um, they supposed to absorb or burn up one of the two for when lightning comes in on the fence side because this goes all across these terminals right here internally so these are supposed to all be uh, suppressors to absorb all that energy from lightning and when they do go bad typically you'll see them be black and they'll be burnt and some of the shell of uh, the coating of the of the these components will be flaking off and burning off and then you'll know okay that one's bad but luckily all these look good I did test that big resistor right there, and it tested fine. All this resistor is right here, this big black one right there, is a, kind of a voltage divider kind of thing to divide the power between full power and half power. It kind of reduces the power coming through it, coming from the hot side, by the full power side. And time it goes to that resistor and gets out here, it's dropped down by quite a bit because the resistor is going to eat up some of that power coming out. I was like, well, that, that was good. Tested the resistor that was right there, and um, it read open. It didn't read anything. It was reading... This burnt, it wasn't didn't look physically bad, it looked good, but read open like well, I'm gonna ohm it out, see what it reads, I saw, or ohmed it out, read nothing, looked at the color code, looked that up, and realized okay, well that one should be reading 47k ohms, it wasn't reading anything, so I put another 47k ohm resistor in, and um, plugged it in, and it was went to flashing, the lights went to were, were nice and bright again down here. And I tested across here, and I was getting about 6.3, 6.5 kV, which transform itself was putting out about 8. But this re this board right here, um, the benefit of having it is it helps out the lightning on the fence side. But the only downside to it, which really isn't a downside, is um, you lose a little bit of volts because it is going across your fence and ground terminals internally. So um, a lot of brands have... Some still have it, some don't. Uh, Cyclops, uh, old Gallagher units like the M800s, M1500s, um, they had a, uh, and even some of the old Speedrite units like the 5800, the uh, 9800s, uh, 980s, 580s, those units, they had some kind of output board in there on their units as well. Cyclops still uses one today. Uh, Zariba and Blitzer, Red Snapper, like their 100 mile, 200 mile, 120, 240 mile units. They've got the storm guard that's, that screw down to the output terminals. That's basically what this board is here. So if you ever have a Zariba unit, you test it, or like a 100 mile plus unit, and you test it without the storm guard, you get about eight, 9,000 volts out of it. You put it on across your fence and ground terminals and retest across there, you get about six, 7,000 volts. That's because these things here all take a little energy uh from the transformer you know drags it down a little bit 
before it gets to the fence and ground terminals. So that's the only downside to it. it you lose a little bit of voltage, but the power output's about the same. You still get that same joules because it doesn't really affect none of the other stuff too much. So um, that's the basic layout of this one. It's real nice. This thing's all, all the parts and individual things are all separated inside. So if you can follow the trail and follow how the flow works and how the inter, you know how these fence chargers uh, operate, you can almost narrow down where your problem lies. So the first thing I did before I even plugged it in, I noticed that these were burnt up. So I redid those. I plugged it in. Started acting better, but not quite right. So I was like, well, I know the transfer is not going to cause that problem. This board wouldn't cause that problem. So I have had to pull the board out and just start going through it. You know, it took a lot of time to get it right, but finally got the board right. It took about three or four, eh, probably two or three trial and errors of replacing parts putting it wiring it back up putting it back in there plugging it in letting it run doing its thing and then uh what's that's the good and the bad about the old stuff is when you replace a component in the in a board there could be other things that are wrong that you can't tell exactly until you get another part fixed and let it run for a while let the heat build up and you know on the on the current flowing through the board let the elect electricity flow for a little bit through it Luckily, at my second, third, or fourth try of going through that board, I think it was like at least three tries on the board before we got all the parts that were finally bad and going bad to stop going bad and working like they're supposed to work. It's just old parts, the old electronics, just, uh, you know, things wear out over time. So, but we'll plug this unit in. Turn this light off real quick because I want to see, I want you to be able to see this light. There's two light bulbs flashing down there. Plug it in. Get my turn my switch on my power on my uh, thing on there. I'll tilt it up there, and you see the little lights flashing right along with every click. Put a uh, fence tester across uh, full power and ground, and then we'll go to reduce power and ground. There we go. 6.2, 6.3. We're in about half. So about almost 3,000. So well, that's, that's just what you get. You know, you get about half the power out of it. Um, so that's why the voltage is a lot lower. Now, if you just to see the spark gap, we'll go across the ground and get really close to the fence. And you can do this with about anything with any fence charger just get something a screwdriver you can use a pair of a uh, needle nose you know something's got a good insulation if you got uh, like a pair of pliers make sure there's no cracks in the thing in the, in the insulation i've held on to these things before not this one but a, a, a pair and didn't realize there was a slight thin crack in, in the insulation somewhere where from using over the years and you go to do that and it shoots a little arc through the insulation into your hand and you pull your hand back in a real big hurry when it does something like that. So now we're going to uh, go across ground, the fence, or fence the ground. It won't really matter. You just want to see the spark jump out of it. So you go from ground. So it's a nice stout unit. I mean, it's probably, like I said, 25 plus years old. But uh, it's a really good unit. So let's just see if I can reach across here and get to the ground set here. We're going to do this. I'm going to have to use my pliers and my screwdriver in a combination. A lot smaller shot for sure. So, but that's it. That's, I mean, that's the gist of this one. I mean, it's a, a good unit. I mean, it's a big old clunky case on it, but still a good unit nonetheless. So we're going to slide this thing back together. There's no tongue and groove trough to slide the unit in. It's going to slide it in there and it slides back together. There's no, nothing for it to follow. 
power it back on and see the light flash from the outside. Oh, I want to show you one more thing. This is like a fence okay light over here. So if you if it's flashing, you should mean it's everything's okay. If for some reason you get a bad short in the fence, uh, this light you know probably still click. Just that light will go out. So we're going to stand up on its side. You can still see it. And I'm going to take a uh, these pliers. I'm going to go across fencing ground. I'm going to dead short it, and you'll see that light stop flashing. See, the light's not flashing. So if you're like, oh, crap, my fence isn't working because my light's not flashing, you go out there, you find the problem, fix it. And as soon as you fix the problem good enough to where you think everything's running, plug the unit back or turn it back on, and the light goes back to flashing. I'm like, okay, my, I must have fixed my fence. So, but um, hopefully you liked that video. You know, uh, tell your friends about us. Share these videos to, you know, anybody that you know that's got electric fence that that's broken or curious about how things work um you know give us a call our website again is fencerfixer.com and uh, cattlescalerepair.com all that stuff will be down in the description area of the video down below just open it up and click the link and then take it right to the site and uh, we do give free quotes on everything that we work on and anything that we do work on and fix for you and you say okay we put a year and a half warranty on it so and that does include lightning damage as part of that warranty so that's kind of a benefit of going through us to work on something for you we you know we guarantee the workmanship of the unit of what we repair and what the work that we've done for up to a year and a half and if and uh, that like i said includes lightning damage and that goes for the scales and the low bars and uh, everything else that we do work on. But uh, hopefully you like this video and subscribe to the channel and hit that thumbs up button. Until next time, we'll see you later.